All right, guys, uh, welcome. My name is Scott Quile. I'm actually a student here at the University of South Florida. Um, I'm studying geography at the moment. Uh, in my past, I studied architecture, and now uh, in the future, for my master's, I'll be studying uh, urban planning and development. Uh, so I'm hoping to one day work with the MPO. At the moment, though, uh, the commissioner has picked me up and um, on my transportation system, and he would like me to kind of throw it out there, kind of get everyone's uh, perception on it, and see where it goes from there. Um, you can always email me at my normal email uh, for uh, USF, or you can also go and see my LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn as well. Um, so let me kind of get you started here. Uh, the biggest thing is when I first moved to Tampa, I noticed one thing. Um, Tampa wasn't a city of transportation. We lack it. Uh, we have something that no other city I can really say for sure um, kind of lacks. Uh, we have a huge problem, and one of it is urban sprawl. Basically what has happened is your downtown districts have gotten so much traffic and congestion that everything has just kept pushing out and out and out, and all these companies are building their industries and their parks and everything further and further away from downtown. And as time goes on, those areas get more congested out there, and they just keep pushing further out. Um, although buses are great, we do need another source of transportation. So my first question was when I came here, what would be great for Tampa Bay um, as a transit system? And I kind of figured, well, uh, you have this huge amount of space that has been taken up by people, and the best way to, to conquer this is to bring them back to the city, or at least closer to uh, the city of Tampa. Uh, unfortunately, as great as it would be to connect St. Pete and Clearwater, um, they already have an, an initiative that's going through and hopefully to be voted on. Um, and if that takes place, we'll be able to uh, link our system in. Um, our, uh, the first thing I noticed was, well, since we don't have any rails, because most of our rails are owned by CSX, and it would cost us not an arm and a leg, but many bodies to actually use their systems, um, we don't want to go ahead and build rail because of the fact that if you do build rail, you're going to have to buy out people's homes, you're going to have to buy out people's businesses, and that's going to cost way too much money for the city to do, and a lot of people are going to be mad that they're going to have to give up their houses that they've probably been sitting in for about 30, 40 years. So imagine yourself being able to go around Tampa Bay, get around your house, your work, and any other amenity that you can think of um, in Tampa. And all you have to do is keep track of your transit system on your phone or even pay it with your phone or just your regular credit card or to a go card or whatever. Uh, imagine being able to actually get on your phone and say, you know what, I'm about to leave the house in about five minutes. Let me get on my phone and find out where my train is. So you'll get on the phone, you'll, you'll get on the app that's made specially for it, you'll click on the station that you want to go to, and it'll tell you the next three trains, when they're going to arrive, and what time. Uh, this way you're always on track, you always know, hey, you know what, I can relax a little bit, it's, it's running a little late today, or it's, you know, hey, it's about five minutes away, I have about five minutes to get there. So. After evaluating everything, I said, well, if the ground's not the option, let's go for the sky. So we decided to go ahead and push for a monorail system. Um, now, it's similar to the monorails you see in Seattle and Disney. However, uh, those monorails run off a third rail. This one wouldn't run off a third rail because there's just too much line. And third rails, usually you have to have a generator spot to re-energize the uh, electricity and send it back out on the tram. Otherwise, it starts to lose electricity as you go through, kind of like electrical poles. Um, so our biggest thing was, all right, we're going to make it a hybrid system. The hybrid system, you don't need to do that. There's no third rail. It's completely 100% um, fueled by itself. Um, the system uh, would allow you to do all sorts of things. Um, you'd be able to get to downtown. You'd be able to get to New Tampa. You'd be able to get to uh, West Shore. Uh, the inter uh, we're actually going to connect into the uh, the airport. They're going to actually connect into West Shore, so there will be a, a station right there that connects you right into the airport from there. Um, and then if you move over to inside the platforms, every platform will have some kind of vendor. Now, the greatest thing about this is the downtown section will actually have the shops built into it. Um, sort of like this one that you see up here. 
where the uh, Starbucks is actually built in. Now the system actually has a GPS location device to actually be able to go onto your phone and say, hey, where is my train? Your stations and your train will both have Wi-Fi on them. So if you're out in the, uh, on the Starbucks or you're out in the platform somewhere, or even if you're in a train and your, your stops are a few stops away, you're, you're always, you always have something to do. It's, it keeps your mind off having to wait for, for everyone to get on and off uh, throughout all your stops. If you also notice, there's a lot of space in between the walls and the train. Um, and that's because we'd have little kiosks in the middle there uh, to also do other things, um, to sell other items there. Uh, we also have walls that um, are empty. Those are for advertisement. And then you have built-in seating where the windows are. Um, the other thing is, in order to pay for, parts of the, uh, pay for most of the system, not only will um, we have to buy our tickets, but at the same time, uh, these uh, platforms and these trains will be contracted out to companies where they can sign a contract for a particular amount of time and be able to advertise their company there and have all the advertising rights for that particular area. Um, so, for instance, if you go to the Coca-Cola station, the Coca-Cola station, Coca-Cola has the advertising rights. Doesn't mean they own the place, but they have the advertising rights for that station and anything they do goes by Coca-Cola. Um, the biggest thing is buses. We have to also uh, we also have to intertwine our buses into the monorail system. So all monorail systems, all um, platforms will have an area where the buses link up to. Uh, again, depending on where the buses are, uh, where, where the uh, platforms are, your Bus systems could also be rented out, your spaces could be rented out to other places too, such as, uh, for instance, there's one right by the USF um, area, and the USF area has not only USF, but has the, all the hospitals, and it has Bush Gardens. So three major components, which is basically what fuels Tampa Bay. I mean, that's where most of our jobs come from. Um, so their bus systems are probably gonna be just as big as this one here, if not bigger, and they might even have spaces where USF is paid just a little extra to have a space just for them. Um, the biggest thing about our, our transit system is uh, not only will you be able to have your company advertise and not only have the access on your phone, uh, you'll be able to get from city center to city center. And the reason being is because, as you all know, uh, Pinellas County is about to go through initiative where they'll vote in a system and their system's gonna come right across 275 Bridge and, and stop at West Shore. Our system's gonna go right by there. It's gonna have a, a union station, basically to have everything connect and be able to switch off onto their system to get you to your next destination from there. Um, parking lots are a big thing. Um, the only place that would not have a parking lot is the downtown section, and it's for two reasons. One, if you live in downtown, then there's no reason for you to have a parking lot. You already have your car parked at your building. It's, you should be walking or biking, whatever the case may be. Uh, the second one is, um, if you're commuting into downtown, we do not want many people commuting by car anymore, we would want them using the tram. So to get rid of parking would actually in get people to use our system. So parking would not be available in the downtown area, but elsewhere, depending on how many people use that, or how many people are expected to use that platform is depending on how many, par how many parking spaces will be added in that area. So I've left a little area for comments, questions. Um. I'm trying to understand, maybe I don't know here much about the transportation. But That's fine. How, how, how do you compare this monorail project with um, other competitors, like um, maybe some rapid transit bus system or some sky, uh, sky bus or something like that? Uh, that's a good question. We're actually going to, um, there's actually a project where 75, 275, and I-4 are going to be expanded to actually have um, rapid bus lanes only. Um, 
In order to do that, though, um, they have, again, they have to expand it. Now, the bus system, although um, it is a great bus system, and we have probably one of the best bus systems, um, they can only do so much. Uh, for instance, um, I live in New Tampa, and I have to commute to downtown uh, just about every other day. For me to do so if I don't have a car, takes me about an hour and a half. And that's not including the 20 minutes that I have to drive out of, da out of New Tampa to get into the Tampa area to park my car at a park and ride and then uh, get on the, and, w and then wait for the bus and then get to downtown. So technically, probably all in all, it's about two hours to get downtown. When it should, you know, by car, I can get to Disney in an hour. So for me to have to wait an hour to get, uh, you know, an hour, hour and a half to get downtown, that's inefficient. But in this system also relies on the bus, right? So is that... Yes, yeah, so it, it does and it doesn't because it'll have, it'll, ha it'll be linking a lot of places together. So you'll be able to get to the major places around, the, uh, around, the, around town. But once you get to that area, yes, you might have to take the bus. Um, you're you're going to have to take other uh, modes of transportation. Um, but it, you know, this will be stopping in the heart of West Shore, um, the airport, downtown. They'll have, a stop, uh, they'll have two stops in the New Tampa area. Uh, they'll have one in Channel Side. Um, and then we're hoping to get one out to Brandon as well. And then one of the big areas that no one seems to be looking at, um, and that was the first one to actually tackle it, is McDill. Um, this one will actually go down to McDill area. The only thing they can think of at the moment is the ferry initiative, the high-speed ferry that would go across from Brandon to the McDill area. This would be a monorail projected like out to New Tampa then? It, it would be projected out to New Tampa um, and we also want to project it out to Brandon as well because a lot of our commuters come from the Brandon area um, and it'll be basically, um, I don't have the map because the map, it's, it's, it's a changing progress. However, uh, we have seen, a, a, when we put all the maps together, we kind of seen a lot of roads looking in the same, it, kind of forming in the same place now. Um, most of it's basically within the inner areas. And uh, you know, th there's a little loop that goes into the new Tampa area and a little loop that goes out to Brandon. Um, but most of it is in the inner, in the inner city because we kind of want those people to come back. Yeah. Um, so we know we don't want to encourage more sprawl. Uh, and what also comes into mind um, when, when we thought about this is uh, we got a kind of a curveball thrown at us with the baseball stadium wanting to now move to the center of downtown. And they would basically be putting it, I don't know if you guys know where the street is, um, uh, down on Madison there's a bunch of 717 parking lots and it's just a bunch of fields of nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where they're looking to put this thing. Um, and if that happens they have to have overflow parking kind of like how the hockey stadium has. Um, I, I actually um, developed this on my own and then uh, I was discovered by the commissioner, uh, Commissioner Mark Sharp, mm -hmm. and he has now, he, I presented it to him, I showed him what, we, what it can and cannot do, um, and he, he's been really into it, so he's like, you know what, let's push this out there and see what the reaction is to it. Well, 